This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad. Oh, 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 oh. this is the day the Lord has I will rejoice, be glad in it. You know that this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter his gates, thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. Say that the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice for He has made me glad. Say amen to that. Now put on the screen for me. This is going to be kind of like our foundation scriptures for a while. Um, put on the screen for me, Saint John chapter fourteen, uh, verses um, twelve uh, uh, through thirteen. Uh, is that right, Brother Hill? Yeah, let's see. Yes, yes, it. Everybody read, please. Uh, fairly, barely, another. Surely, surely. Hear me, hear me. Um. He that believeth, or he that has faith, he that has faith in God, uh, will do the works that Jesus did, and greater works than these shall, shall they do. I want, I want to get this planted in your soul uh, in this ministry, because um, the, the church of Jesus Christ tonight, is in need of the manifestation of God's glory. It can't be us just barely getting by. We need to see the supernatural power of God manifested in God's church. Say amen. amen. The same thing that Jesus did, we should be believing God for the same thing and even more. Because of what? That's what the Bible says. Say amen to that. Verse 13, verse 3. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name. So then, by faith, we've got to ask in Jesus' name that we'd be able to do the same thing that he did. It's not enough just to be a good preacher. It isn't enough just to give sound doctrine. No, no. We need to see the manifestation of God's power. And we need to ask for it. And I'll challenge all of you prayer warriors to begin to ask for it. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. How many believe God keeps his words? Amen. Amen. That will I do. That the Father may be glorified. In the sun. So, so Jesus is concerned about what? The glorification of the Father. Say amen to that. Amen. And he would like to use you as a vehicle, if you will, to be used by, by God's anointing so that God can show his power and might through you and bring glory to the Son. Am I seeing that verse correctly? Is that, do y'all agree with that assessment? And whatsoever. Help somebody say whatsoever. whatsoever. Raise your hand and say whatsoever means whatsoever. 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 Uh, amen. <laughs> whatsoever. That means whatsoever. Mean whatsoever you, that ye shall ask in the name, in my name. That will I do. Mm -hmm. that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14, 14. 
if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So what's the, what, what is the requirement of having God answer your prayer? Asking in the name of Jesus and what else? Having faith that he's heard you. Having faith that he's heard you. Praise God. So um, God said to me uh, that um, this ministry needs to upgrade our faith. In other words, it's communicated to me that we need to upgrade our faith. How many know your faith needs to be upgraded? Say amen. amen. Now you go fly on an airplane, you're going to know kind of get upgraded. Amen. Can I get out of the back of the plane and get in first class? About you? So we need to come out of coach and get in the first class. In our faith, you see. Because you can't go around here believing for what uh, somebody told you 40 years ago. You got to believe what the word says. And I'm telling you tonight that Christianity has been grossly dumbed down. Where church people are, are not expecting for the best that God has to offer. Menial things, small things have captured their minds. And, and they think they're blessed if they got a nice car, nice home, and don't let them be dead free. They think they're really blessed. And, and, and uh, they can take a trip here and there. They say, oh, look, I've got. But that's nothing. That's nothing. No, no, God wants to manifest his glory uh, in his church. But he can't do it if there's not enough what? Faith. Remember the Bible says that Jesus could not do many great works. Why? Unbelief. Unbelief will stop the power of God. So if we're going to see uh, the same kind of works that Jesus did in, in this ministry, and if your life is going to get to that lofty place where you can say the Lord is my shepherd, I, I don't want for anything, it's got to be done by faith. It can't be done because of any other law except the law of faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Say amen to that. So we're going to go to the to the what I call in the Bible, the faith library. Where is that? Hebrews 11. The faith library. It's about 16, 17 examples in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. And we're going to, at, at some point, we're going to go through all of them. Because we're going to get our faith on the level where we're going to walk that word and get the same thing that God promised us. Amen to that. Uh, so examples of faith. Somebody have me say examples of faith. As we study the 11th chapter of Hebrews, we will observe how the people of God used their faith and received signs, miracles, and wonders from God. <laughs> Amen. They were, just, they were just regular people. They, they were not superhumans. They, they were not, some, some of them were not well-educated people. But the distinguishing thing about them is that they operated in faith. And they received signs and they received miracles and wonders from the hand of God. And how many of you believe God the same today, today that he can do the same today? We will also consider uh, other passages of scriptures that would reveal how God honored people when they used their faith in God. When you use your faith in God, you will get honored by God. Something is going to happen in your life that, that you can point to that's not going on in everybody's life. God want to put a mark on you. God want to do something for you, in you, or through you, that would confirm that he's God. Say amen, somebody. Amen. There are illustrations and patterns in the scriptures that we can draw wisdom from as we are seeking to have increase in our faith. There, 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 there are patterns and there are, are principles and words of wisdom in the scriptures and when you study them and you learn them 
and you learn how to embrace them, the same thing that those words, those, the, same, the same God that under those men and women's faith will be the same God under your faith. He wants to do something great in your life. I mean, God wants to give you a miracle. God, God want God to do something in your life that is so spectacular until somebody, your family members or friends or co-workers or somebody, would say, well, I wonder how does she do that? I wonder. And many times, God, listen, he'll, he'll allow you to be in a situation where it would be known throughout your family that you are in a pickle, as it were. It would be known throughout your family that, that is, there's no way you're going to get out of what you're in. And folk will be talking about you. And God will step right in that thing and bring you out more than a, than a conqueror. And he'll take you and parade you up and down the streets, as it were, so people can see what God's done for you. Amen. And, and you, everybody in here, you are a, a, a prime subject for God to do that through. But you got to begin to think like it. You got to begin to expect God to do something spectacular in your life. That you're going to use your faith in God and God's going to give you a miracle. Raise your right hand. I'm going to use my faith in God. And God's going to give me a miracle. Yeah, he's going, in other words, God's going to do something for you that, that you can't do for yourself. He's going to turn something around in your life. I said, God's going to turn something around in your life. And, and, and you're, going to say, you're going to say, wow. It's going to wow you, praise God. Amen, praise God. So there are illustrations and patterns in the scriptures that we can draw wisdom from as we seek and are seeking to have increase in our faith. It's God. Uh, it's, it's, God it's God that will do it. If, and if he did it for others, he will do it for us. Raise your hand, raise your hand and say, if God did it for others, He'll do it for me. Does anybody in and out know why that's true? Why is that true? God is not a God of respect of person. He is not a God of respect of person. If he's done it for one, he'll do it for another. The only thing that you've got to do is come up with some faith. Now, <clears throat> one of the first things I want to remind us of is that we are that we all have the measure of faith. And, the, and we won't turn there, but in the latter part of Romans chapter 12, verse number 3, the Bible says God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. In other words, God has given everyone the ability to have faith in him. So you sitting here tonight, you may, may not have faith in God, but I want you to know that, that you have the ability to have faith in God because you have the measure of faith in you. It's in you. You have the measure of faith in you. Some of them will say, I have the measure of faith within my being. Amen. You have, you have the potential of having faith in God. Now, just because God gave you the measure of faith, it, it does not always follow suit that, that you're going to have faith in God. Amen. And according to the word of God, he wants us to focus the faith he has given us on him. Put on the screen for me, St. Mark chapter 11, verse number 22. And by the way, I'll tell you, I love y'all tonight. You know, boy, I'm telling you right now, I pray that somebody in here but do something spectacular that would that shake CNN and Fox. They'd be having you come on TV to talk about how you did what you did. And somebody said, I can't see that. You just seal your faith because you said you can't. Somebody said one time, the man who says that I can't 
and the man who says, I can, are both right. Well, that'll come to you later, praise God. All right. Read that, everybody. Read. Have the God kind of faith. In other words, God wants you to have faith in him. What does God want? God does not want you pitiful. He does not want you complaining. He doesn't want you feeling sorry for yourself. He doesn't want you to think that you're a loser. He doesn't want you down. You know, sometimes you can be on a, a sports team, like a football team or basketball team or whatever, and you get, you get behind in the first quarter. You don't want you don't be playing when a lot of people say, oh, well, the game is over. Man, we got three more quarters to play. What are you talking about? Turn to your neighbor and say, the game ain't over yet. I mean, just because things aren't going so well for you right now, it doesn't mean that you're a loser. Man, God can flip that thing tomorrow. He can flip it. <laughs> I mean, you wake up tomorrow and the whole thing then flipped on you because you got off in the faith. Praise God. So God wants you to have the faith that God has given you. He wants you to use it in him. I said the faith that God has given you, he wants you to use it in him. Say amen to that. And when we come to have, now, now make, make sure you hear this. When we come to have a broader sense of the fact that faith is the law that allows God to demonstrate his love toward us and prove that he has all power and can do anything. This is the way he does it. You see, you see that God's hands are tied in regards to you when you don't have faith in him. There's, there are some people who have died, and God didn't want them to die. But they died because either they or nobody got into faith for them. Sometimes God doesn't want people to die, but they die because of, because of not having faith that God can heal. Now, my confession is this right here. I'm not going to die that God says so. When they rolled this carcass out in front of you right here, I want y'all to know that I didn't go one, not one second before God called me. The devil ain't sending me nowhere. Raise your right hand and say, I'm not going to die until God says so. And turn your name and say, the devil ain't sending me nowhere. He ain't sending me nowhere. He ain't going to kill me. Who do you think, who you think you, who you think you're dealing with? Glory to God, brother. Amen. Therefore, we should have the same desire that the first disciples had uh, in regards to faith. They wanted something. They wanted something in regards to faith. St. Luke 17 and 5. St. Luke 17 and 5. They had something that they wanted. Read somebody. They wanted their faith to increase. Now, God told them they had faith of grain of mustard seed, but, but I, I, get, I get the drift of what they were talking about. In other words, they wanted more faith. How many, how many like your faith to be increased? Amen. amen. Well, raise your hand and say, God, increase my faith. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want more faith. I want to do more things. I, I, I want to see more of God's power. Anybody know that there's more power than what you've experienced to date? How many really know that? How many know that God has much more power than has been demonstrated in your life? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Says, says that's much more. And by faith, claim it. Don't, don't settle. Don't settle where you are. Expect things to get better for you. Expect things to give, ex expect to count more money. E expect it. Expect it to feel better in your body. Ex expect more power. It's available to you. And don't be looking around trying to find out who's going to go with you. Uh -uh, don't do that. Because when you get on our highway of faith, a lot of folks just say, okay, I'll see you later then. 
I'll see you later because, see, sometimes faith scares people. But they don't have faith. Like, like the, the, those spies, they went up there. It was the 12 of them up there, and they went up there. So, And, he, and, he, and Moses and I go up there. Just, just let us know what's out there. Just let us know what's, what's out there. So they went out there, and they came back. And 10 of them said, man, said, no, man. No, we can't do nothing to people up there. They, 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 they big old people up there, big old giants. And, and they called us grasshoppers, and they made me feel like a grasshopper because I felt like hopping away from them people. And, uh, and they, they was all, they, <laughs> they were sitting up there, and they, they started crying the blues about, about uh, they couldn't do nothing with them people. And Joshua and Caleb said, shut up. Said, let us go up right now. Let's go up at once. We can go up there right now and take them. Because Joshua and Caleb were operating in faith. That's why it's important for you to get with people who have faith. Don't hang around people who are full of fear. Fear and anxiety, and they don't believe for nothing. If you ever had a prayer meeting, you always say, so what do you believe in for? Well, I just pray. I just want God to say, no, I don't want to pray with you because you ain't got no sense. You need to be specific. What do you want from God? Like the little boy started putting on his mama's apron. Mama, mama, mama. And mama said, boy, what you want, boy? I, I don't know. Well, then you better go somewhere and sit down. You better find out what you want. Put it on your mama's apron. You better tell her what you want. You keep talking to God. Let God know what you want. And don't ask him for no little old stuff. Ask God for some big stuff. Don't be, don't be asking God for stuff you can do. Because if you can do it, you need to go and do it. Don't be worrying God about it. But ask God to do things for you that's so big. That's so big until when it happened, everybody knows that was God. Yeah. Well, I'm about to get happy. I better come down. Our faith will increase if we exercise and maintain it. Your faith is the most important thing in your life when it's dealing with God. And you got to exercise your faith. Do you not know that if you tape your arm to your chest and just leave it there for a Three years. And then once you untape it and try to do an arm wrestle with a 10-year-old, who's going to win? Yeah. Because you have not been doing what? Exercise. You have to exercise your faith, beloved. Don't be afraid to exercise. And before we go through all the, 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 the examples in Hebrews 10, Hebrews 11, excuse me, I'm going to show you how to do it. I know how to do it. I know how to exercise my faith. And I'm in the process of doing it as I speak. And something is going to happen for me. I mean, dear God, something good's going to happen. Is there anybody else in here who know, know how to exercise your faith? Raise your hand. If you know how to exercise your faith, raise your hand. Say, I, say, I know how to What other now? Y'all don't need me to tell y'all. Since y'all already know that. I ain't telling y'all nothing. Not about that. Amen. Well, then, since you know how to exercise, go start there. One, two, three, four. If you know how to exercise your faith, start exercising it then. Maintain it. Amen. We have been given grace to enable us to exercise our faith. Romans 1 and 5 on the screen, please, sir. Romans chapter 1, verse number 5. By whom... We have received this from God. We receive what? Grace and, and they were talking about their apostleship. What was the purpose of that, that grace? For obedience to the faith. Being obedient by faith among all nations for his name. God has graced you. Listen, listen. God has graced you to be able to utilize, utilize your faith. You can do it. I, I want you to know that it's not beyond you. Yes, you. Those of you who put yourself down all the time, you. If you get into faith, then you know what God's going to do for you. Amen to God. So how can we grow our faith? How can we grow it? Uh, Romans 10, 17. 
Romans 10, 17. How can we grow our faith? So then faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. At Romans 1, 17. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. And then you're going from one faith level to another. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now go back to Romans 10 and 17. Back to Romans 10 and 17. Praise God. I want to show you something there. Everybody read that again. Read. Now, now you need to know that this is a deeper hearing than just hearing through those things on the side of your head. Uh, hearing with the ear of the mind is what this is talking about. Hearing with the ear of the heart. Your heart has ears. And um, when you hear the word of God in your heart, then faith comes. Faith comes. Uh, this hearing uh, has to do with the heart. And it gives understanding and it gives desire to perform what has been spoken. See, see when, when, when the word of faith gets into your heart, then you get a desire to do it. As a matter of fact, you can get so full of faith until you lose your appetite for the world. You get caught up in faith in God. There's one thing about faith, you can never graduate. There's no university of faith where you can say, oh, I graduate. No, you can't. There's always something more to learn about faith. There's more to learn about God. When we get to heaven, we'll spend eternity with God, but you'll never know everything God knows. I believe from time to time God's going to wow us in heaven. We're going to be going to tomorrow. Wow, man. Did you see what God did yesterday? Wow. Wow. Because there's no end to God. He's getting bigger every moment. The kingdom of God is getting bigger every moment. Amen. So we live by faith. Let me say we live by faith. Galatians 2 and 19. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 19. For, though, for through the law, am, for, for I am through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto God. So the law has no claim. The law and the flesh has no claim on the believer because of his faith. His faith in what? His faith in God's word. When you trust God's word and you accept Christ as your savior, the flesh does not have mastery over you without your permission. You, you have to say yes to the flesh from your inner man before the flesh can rule you. If you tell the flesh, no, the flesh got to do what you say do. If your flesh told me, I'm tired, I'm going to go, I'm getting to bed, and then and you ain't ready to go to bed, though. Your, your spirit man said, no, we're going to say it until the end of this Bible study. Now, if your flesh just get up and take you out to the car and start the car, you call me. Because, honey, child, we got a problem here. If your flesh doesn't sound, well, I'm going home right now. And you be saying, I ain't ready to go. I'm ready to go. Let's go. And then get them, go start, start your car. You better start yelling. You just say, help me, somebody help me. Because you sure need help. And when the flesh tells you to go commit adultery and you obey it, you need help. Uh-huh. Yeah. When the flesh tells you to do something that you don't want to do, and you do it anyway, that means you are under the control of what? The flesh. But you don't owe the flesh nothing. The flesh is no longer your boss. He used to be, but not in the most saved manner now. Romans 8, 12, and 13. Romans chapter 8, verse 12 and 13. Therefore, brethren, 
We are debtors not to the flesh. Therefore, brethren, we are, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. You don't have to keep doing what you did before you got saved. By faith, you have victory over that. Now, now being saved did not stop your flesh from asking. Your flesh will always ask for what it wants. And don't be asking God to stop it. Oh, God, come on down. Stop my feet from going over there. Oh, oh God, help me, Jesus. God looks at you like, look, he'll look at you like you're a fool. He gave you the authority. You have authority over your body. You have authority over your soul, your spirit. God gave you that authority to, to by faith, give it over to God. Use your faith to put it under God's control. Say amen to that. Therefore, brethren, we are debtor not to the flesh to live after the flesh. Verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. And it's, all of this is done by what law? The law of faith. It's not done by, oh, you just going to be so strong. You, man, I'm, boy, I'm tough. No, you ain't that tough. Without the grace of God and the spirit of God and the word of God, your flesh will flip you. Amen. How did the flesh flip you before you got saved? Over and over and over. Even when you said you weren't going to do it no more. But you did it again. All right, praise God. All right, now. All right, Hebrews 11 and 1. Oh, we got to hear it on you. Hebrews 11 and 1. Read, everybody. Praise God. The definitions of faith. Well, they are just, I looked and looked all around, there's, there's a whole lot of definitions. I, I selected uh, two or three here. Number one, and I love this one, the cancellation of natural laws. Faith in God. Faith will cancel, it, will, will, will cancel out the natural law. The natural law said that you're supposed to die of that thing, and God will get in there and cancel that out and reverse it. Ooh, I love it. I love it. He cancels the natural. It's a cancellation of the natural law. Number two, faith is the evidence of things not seen. You don't have any physical proof that it exists. But your faith says that it does. And when you believe something in your heart, and you really believe it, and you keep speaking it, it's got to manifest. Praise God, man. I love it. I love it. And, and when you deal with God, everything you get from God, you get it through the law of faith. You don't get it because you earn it. You don't get it because you're nice. If you think that you're going to get a blessing from God because you're nice, you just unplug yourself from the grace of God. Because you think that you're going to get it because of what you do. And a lot of holiness churches in the inner cities of America messed a lot of black people up. If you, you, you say you, you can't be saved doing that, and you can't be, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You name it and a saved person has done it. You have to understand, by faith, when you accept Christ as your Savior, you become a new creature. You get a new nature. People don't go to hell because of what they do. People don't go to heaven because of what they do. They go to hell or heaven based upon what they are. And when you when you have not been born again, when you haven't been born again, sinners tell the truth sometimes, but that doesn't save them. Sinners do nice things to help humanity, but that doesn't save them. Sinners may obey the 
the, the laws of, 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 the, of, of the signal light, lights out their laws. They, but that doesn't save them. They, knew, they do nice things, but nice things they don't, don't save a sinner. I don't care how many nice things a sinner does, they can never be saved until they get what? Born again. And they get born again through what law? The law of faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. Through faith. And that, not of yourself, is the gift of God, not of works that any man should boast. And, and all of you in there tonight, you have the faith that's necessary. But some of you sit up on the bad doctrine, and you need a spiritual castor oil to flesh that stuff out of your soul. Yeah. Sitting up on a bunch of do's and don't preachers. You can't do this and be saved. You can't do that. And you've got to do this if you want to be saved. You want to be saved. And that's putting people under the law. For by grace you say, now listen to this. Listen to this. When you get born again, you do some sin after you get born again. Oh, okay, some people looking funny. Don't you have me to come out there. I'm talking about you. You've done things that you should not have done since you've been saved. And you know what you call it? Sin. Now everybody who knows that you've committed a sin since you've been saved, raise your right hand. Raise it out, raise it out. Say, I've committed a sin, committed a sin. Since, I've been since I've been saved. But aren't you glad that didn't unsave you? Yeah. That didn't unsave you. May I tell you, you can't, you can't commit enough sin to unsave you. It's impossible to commit. How, how, if, sin, if, 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 if you were dead in sin and you came alive through the blood of Jesus, you came alive through the Holy Ghost, you came alive through the grace of God. Well, how that same sin going to turn around and kill you? Cannot be done. I said it cannot be done. Now, now, I can hear someone say, oh, my. Yeah, I know, oh, my. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Those of us who are truly born again, we hate it when we sin. Those of us who are born again, when we make a mistake, we hate it. And, and you just feel so nasty. And you don't want to ever do it again. And 1 John 1, 9 says these words. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. I love those two words. Faithful and just. You can depend on him to do it, and he's justified in forgiving you. A holy God can forgive, can forgive a sinful man because that man's sins have already been paid for. They've been paid for. Who paid for them? When did he pay for them? What did he use to pay for them? Who did he satisfy? God. So God's got the right to forgive you every time you ask him. Well, then how many times will God forgive? Well, if God told you to forgive each other seven times seven, well, then you know he, he'll forgive you more than that. May I tell you that God will forgive you every time you ask him? How many times? I'm sometimes preaching be talking about God's a God of a second chance. I want to yell at him. Preacher, you need to sit down. If, if that was the case, then you wouldn't be standing up there right now yourself. The God of a second chance. He's a God of as many chances as you need. How many do you need? How many chances do you need? God is there to forgive you. But then he wants you to learn how to use your faith to stop falling in the same ditch. Pick another ditch. Pick another ditch. Stop falling in the same one. Amen. Somebody help me say amen. So faith Faith uh, is dependence upon the word of God. Hallelujah. My, my, my favorite definition of faith is that faith is acting on God's word as if it's true. And it is true. I obey God's word because I trust it. And all you folks who raised your hand a moment ago tell me you know I live by faith. I hope you're trusting the word. Because it's one thing to know how, but it's another thing to do it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say amen to that. Amen. Okay. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith. When is faith? Now. When is faith? Now. 
And what is it? It's substance. Faith is substance. Faith is substance. Substance is what? The things that you hope for. In other words, when you're having faith about something, it's already done in the spiritual world. But you've got to wait for it to manifest in the natural world. It's your evidence. When you use your faith and believe God for something, then you should do a whole lot of thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And get before God and say, God, I just want to let you know I thank and praise you. I know you've done that. But I want you to know I know you've done it. I want to thank you for it in Jesus' name. I know I'm healed by faith. I want to thank you for it in Jesus' name. I know I'm going to get that job, God. I want to thank you for it in Jesus' name. Go to bed and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Get up in the morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. When you got something you believe in God for, you better thank him for it. You better get glad about that thing and thank him for it because it's already what? Done. Praise God. Now, all you folks in there said you know how to use your faith. Now, how many of you in here tonight have something that you need God to do for you? Raise your right hand. You have a need. Well, shame on you. Put your hand down. What you mean you need God to do something for you? If you're a man of faith, it's already done. <laughs> it's all done. You, gotta need, you, gotta need. you ain't got no need. Your God shall supply all your need. So use your faith and call it. It's already done. You're just waiting for it to manifest. Now, better question to answer is this. How many are waiting for something to manifest? Raise your hand. Now, that's different. Turn your names. That's different. Hallelujah. That guy. I'm about to get happy right here, right there, bro. Oh, because I know in Jesus' name, by faith, we're going to see the same work that Jesus did. I thank and praise God for it. I'm praying for it. I believe for it. It's going to come to pass in the name of Jesus because we are going to get full of faith. Is there any faith in the house? We're going to get full of faith, and we're going to get victory over the only person who can ruin our lives. Who is that? Yourself. Praise God. A life of faith is what distinguished, well, verse number, verse number two, excuse me. Read, verse two, read. A life of faith gave the elders a distinguished life and set them above the common man. They were able to confirm who God is through the demonstration of power and character that came in and through that life by faith. Same thing will happen to you. You're going you're gonna to have proof for the world around you that Jesus Christ is Lord because of the demonstration of power that's going to flow through you. Thank you, Jesus. Didn't the Bible tell you Believe on me as the scripture has said and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And don't you know you're going to get a glass of the water every once in a while yourself? That's water to keep you alive. Keep you from being all sad and, and feeling sorry for yourself because things are not the way you want them to be in your marriage and now you're on your job. And be, no, 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 no. By faith in Jesus' name, I will not be brought into bondage to anything or anybody. You can act the fool all you want to, but you ain't stealing my joy because this joy that I have, the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. I'm not going to allow a bunch of unbelievers to call me to act like them. <laughs> unbelievers are like they're up and down, up and down, and around. But believers, they go up and then they hold on. Till the storm goes by. And then they straighten back up. Why do you think palm trees can stand any hurricane? It can be a cap nine. Palm trees say, bring it on. That palm tree said, bring it on. Ain't nobody scared of you. Hallelujah to God. Because a palm tree's roots are just as deep as it is tall. And when the wind starts blowing on that palm tree, do you know what it does? It bows down with it. Blow, wind, blow. Because you, you ain't going to blow forever. You're going to start blowing at the wild. 
And as soon as you stop blowing, I'm going to straighten right back up. And in your life, sometimes cold winds blow on you. But you don't let that wind uproot you out of the church, uproot you out of having faith in God. You got to flow with it. Let the trouble know. Trouble don't last all the way. Dun, dun, dun. Trouble don't last all the way. I mean, no trouble don't last all the way. And that trouble going to pass, and you're going to straighten right back up and praise the Lord. And you're going to be stronger than you were before the trouble came. Why don't y'all say amen in this house right here? And finally, finally, uh, Hebrews 11 and 3. 11 and 3. Read somebody. Now, this is one of the most important, and this is our last point tonight. We're going to pick this back up next time. This is one of the most important things for you to believe. Go to Genesis 1. Genesis chapter 1. This is one of the most important things that a believer has to believe. If you don't believe this, then it's going to have a negative impact on your faith for the rest of God's word. In the beginning, God. Who? God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God did that. Man didn't do this. God did it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse number two. Verse 2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Holy Ghost was involved in creation, people. Verse number 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. How did he bring light forth? He spoke it. He said it. He, he, did, he said it, and what he said came to pass. Verse number four. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God delighted, divided the light from the darkness. Verse number five. And God called the light day, and, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So what do we call the night, the darkness now? We call it nighttime. God started calling it, that's what we called it. We don't call dark light and light dark because God started the whole thing. Thank you, Jesus. Verse number six. God keep on talking. They keep talking. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God said it, and guess what? It came to pass. Verse 7. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Everything God said, it was so. And I want you to know that he's, he's yet talking tonight. And that's one of the reasons I love prayer and fasting and Bible reading. I'm going to tell you one of the main reasons I love it. If you stay in God's face, at some point, he's going to say something. He may tell you to adjust something. He may tell you to add something to your life. He may tell you to subtract something from your life. But once he tells you something, be sure to do what he said. Because once he said it, he's good for it. I shall I never shall forget when God started talking to me about quitting my job. My God, man. I heard him, but I was scared. I said, oh, no, my wife is pregnant. Quit my job? Yeah, no, 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 no. Until finally, he said it to her. And once he said it to her, I know he was talking because I didn't tell her. And my wife knew it too. And so she got the same word I got. Boom. I stepped out, and it looked like it turned out pretty good. It turned out, turned out pretty good. Amen. Amen, somebody. Verse 8, verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evenings and the morning were the second day. Verse 9. And God said, what did he do? 
God said, let the water, waters under the heaven be gathered together uh, unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Anybody know that there's enough water in that ocean to cover all Los Angeles? Can cover Los Angeles. Well, why doesn't it do it? Because God set the boundaries. And God told the ocean what to do. You go so far and then you go back. Every once in a while I may blow on you and you do a little more, but other than that, you, you go right there and stop. That's our God. Next verse. Next verse. Turn it off. Amen. <laughs> Next verse. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called. He sees and God saw that it was good. Verse 11. And God said, I just want you to get a sense of how God created the earth, how he created the earth. God said, let the earth bring forth the grass, the herbs yielding seed, and the fruit tree uh, yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. My time is out. But I want you to see this tonight, that the first place you need to use your faith is believing that the earth was created by God. Amen. Secondly, believe that God scooped up the dust of the earth and blew the breath of life into man's nostrils and man became a living soul. You did not evolve from a monkey. Now, some of us may look like it, <laughs> but, but, we, but we didn't. We did not come from a monkey, an amoeba. We were not, it was not an accident somewhere. The, the scientists of the world, many of them are trying to say that, that, that uh, the world evolved. They believe in evolution. It's a lie. This world was created by God. Say amen to that. And you, not you, but humanity, Adam, Adam was made in the, in, in the likeness and after the image of God. Amen to God. And he walked with God until he allowed that lying devil to trick him. And then once that devil tricked him, that was it. And that's the reason why you were a born sinner. You were a born sinner because of what Adam did. What did I just say? And you are a born-again saint because of what Jesus did. Amen. So don't run around here thinking everybody is better than you, and don't run around here thinking you're better than anybody. Amen. All of us are saved by the same blood, born of the same spirit, if we're born again. Now, God is not a God of respect to person, but he is a God of respect to faith. He'll do more for a man or woman who's operating in faith than he will for a person who's not. It doesn't mean he loved that person more, but that person is used in their faith. And as a rule, people who don't use their faith get mad at those who do. Just look at him, think he's something. Just look at it. Just look at them. Look at them. They think they're something. All because you're too scared to use your faith. You have to step out and use your faith. And, and as we close tonight, I can't wait to get down to the life of Abraham. Because the Bible says Abraham, by faith, left his family members. By faith, Abraham was getting ready to put a knife in his son because Abraham knew that God was going to bless his people through Isaac but he was willing to slay him with the confidence that God would raise him from the dead raise your right hand everybody help me say I have the measure of faith and I can develop my faith by simply obeying the word of God your faith 
will get stronger when you allow the word of God to orchestrate your value system. Allow the word of God to direct how you treat people. Treat people the way the Bible told you to. Go ahead, I got it. I promise you that if you allow the word of God to orchestrate how you do business, to orchestrate your character, allow the word of God to lord over you, which means you got to know it before you can do it. But dear brother and sister, I promise you tonight that if you by faith practice the word of God, the Bible kept saying that by faith Abraham did this and by faith Moses did that and by faith the woman did this and the man did that. And when they by faith obeyed God, God honored their lives. I give myself away. Hey, hey. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Hey, hey, I give myself away so you can use me. Here I am. Here I stand. Lord, my life is in your hand. Your desire fulfill in me. I give myself away. Ah. Hey, hey. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Mm. Hey, hey. I give myself away so you can use me. And Father, tonight, I pray that every man and woman viewing my stream and those who are present that we'd get full of faith that we'd see in the spirit that our faith will grow as we obey we are in obedience by faith when we attend church we're walking by faith when we pray we walk by faith when we read and meditate in the Word. That's an act of faith. When we pay our tithe and give offering, it's an act of faith. When we repent, when we ask for forgiveness, when we ask others to forgive us, it's an act of faith because we're acting on your Word. So I'm praying for everybody under my care, those here, those aren't here, that all of us would get full of obedience to you because I know that as we obey you that you're going to do something special in our lives raise your right hand everybody and say as I by faith apply the word of God to my life God will bless and honor my life in the name of Jesus if you believe that clap hands say praise the Lord amen all right. Thank you so much for coming to Bible study. You know, and, and I got a word for somebody here. Uh, when I was upstairs before I came down, I felt led of the Lord to challenge somebody who's here in the night.
to send God a special offering. I don't know who you are, but you have something that you're asking God to, to do for you. And I challenge you tonight from God. In fact, in fact, you know who you are. And you got some money that you need to plant. You got an offer you need to give. And you know who you are. And God told me to challenge you tonight. In fact, all of you who are viewing, if you, if you were blessed by what you heard tonight, text an offering. Go online and give an offering. Send one by mail. And God will bless you for it. If you're feeding out of this ministry, if you're eating out of it, do yourself a favor and give an offering and watch God work uh, in your life. Amen. Praise God. You may come. Go home by faith. Amen. My life is not my Thank you for own. attending Loving Unity Christian Fellowship on today. We would like you to participate in this time of worship and giving. You can utilize text to give Ministry One app, or go to loveandunity.org. If you would like to text, please text the word GIVE to 310-507-1181. Or you can use our new church Ministry One app by going to your Play Store and ordering Ministry One app. It's free. Or go to loveandunity.org, L-O-V-E-A-N-D-U-N-I-T-Y dot org and you can give there. Thank you so much again for joining us here at Love and Unity Christian Fellowship. You're going to have a good time.